Okay, so quick update on using Cursor Background Agent. Yesterday, I tried it out for the first time and I tweeted a screenshot of what it had done and like got some pushback against it. Um, I'm very new to Cursor Agent. I don't want to pretend it does miracles, but some of the feedback seems to think that like, yeah, well, let's read this post. But D Dagobert says, I don't believe these posts anymore. Is Cursor really working without supervision for you? Well, good question. And I will go into it and show you what actually happened in this video. But yeah, that's not what I was saying. And in short, it, it definitely struggles. But anyway, personally, I always have to micromanage because otherwise it will just build things without enough context, recreates the same modules and function in different parts of the app, which makes code unmaintainable in the long term. And my code base is small, like 150K tokens total. Okay, like firstly, I agree with that experience and experience for me, so not disagreeing. Also often destroys entire parts of my app without realizing if I don't monitor things closely. Okay, this doesn't really, yeah, I micromanage it pretty well, so it never does anything too crazy. I don't let it, but okay, I guess that's what's happened there. But of course, sometimes it works like magic, but most of the time not. What am I missing? Okay, so I'll answer this in a sec, but I use Gemini 2.5 Pro for planning and generating task list and cursor with Sonnet or Gemini for implementing step-by-step. P.S. Step. Nothing against Ellie, just followed him and loved his videos, by the way. Thank you very much. And yeah, not offended. So to answer this question, what am I missing? Personally, I haven't been able to make anything work end-to-end. -end. I'm actually curious to check out all the different tools like Devin and Codex, a bunch of others that cursor code I haven't tried in a while. I've heard it's improved a bunch. So yeah, I am curious to see sort of if anyone is actually f implementing full features. I'm not, basically. I did try it in this and I'll show you how it went. Where I have found Cursor super helpful is just like, I do direct it pretty closely. I use tab autocomplete a lot. That was the first thing I fell in love with with Cursor when I first tried it out like a year ago and it was just way better than VS Code and that's why I got really excited about it and moved over immediately. And things like utility functions, extract the domain from this email or whatever it is, things like that just don't need to think about because like Cursor will do that very easily. I will use it for things way beyond that as well. As you can see in the screenshot that I showed, I have this task list or MDC file. So it does break it down into separate tasks. This I hadn't even read, honestly, in this case, but usually how I'm using this file is I'll tell it, okay, put this file together. I'll check it over, scan it, see if it makes sense, and then say, okay, let's do the first step and just go through it step by step, similar to what Dagobert was saying. And yeah, each step of the way, I'll let it do its thing. But if I see it going off, then I'll correct it. One thing I do do is use cursor rules that I've spoken about quite a lot in the past. So if I just go here to my project, I know some very common mistakes it's going to be making on my project. So like even the other day, and I'll show you in this video, it made this mistake. But like things like importing Prisma, it will do from the wrong place. Or like data fetching, I use SWR. I want it to fetch data in this format. A lot of the time it won't. Like in this task I gave it, it used fetch. And so after that, I had to say, hey, do it like this way. I just tagged the data fetching and it fixed it. And then another one I tag often is like server actions. It did that wrong. So I said tag it and get API route. Now, actually, probably these are like these I'm like tagging so much. I think I should just put them all into one role and just like tag that role. Even always have it like attached. So give it even more of a chance to know how I want my project run. But yeah, in short, like I have these struggles and it, nothing is like perfect with these agents right now. It does like a decent job, but it won't finish a feature end to end. Now, this video is going on. I wanted it to be quick. I did do a two minute video the other day showing how Cursor Agent works and gave a bit more context to it than this tweet, basically. But anyway, I'm just going to show you what I actually went and did. And I'm actually quite impressed. This is after one round of like minor edits, but th th this page probably actually loaded immediately the first time. But this was a refer friends page it created. I didn't do any sort of wireframe for it. If it was like a more important feature, I probably would have done. Maybe I will afterwards to clean it up. But you can see it's, it does what it needs to do. It gives a referral code. Here's the referral code, inbox Z, uh, Z24F2, can copy it, which works. I can share this, by the way, I hadn't even seen before. Did you know you could do this? So there's this navigator.share API that does this, which like first I'm learning of it because that's implemented it for me. I still haven't tested if I share this link, if it's actually going to work and do the full referral. I'll check it out afterwards. But yeah, overall, this is pretty solid. And by the way, also the reason I chose Cursor Agent to do this task, this is like very standalone. This could probably be added to any code base. What the task was, was to build a refer a friend system. So you can see here is the like the prompt I gave it, build a refer a friend system. I tag task list or MDC, which gets Cursor to break this down into 20 tasks and then go step by step. I'm curious actually what it would have done had I not tagged it, but I figured why not? And then I wrote for every friend you refer, you get a month three 
only if friend finishes a seven day free try. So pretty generic feature that doesn't touch anything in the core app. So I figured that's a really good one to, to give to the AI. And what's cool is that it just fully runs in the background. It opens its own branch. It can make its own PR. Well, I click like the PR. You can see in my other video, it's not lo loading here, which is a little bit annoying, as you can see. Hmm, now I've got this error popping up. That's weird. I guess maybe it's got deleted or something. But either way, if you want to see the actual PR it made here, you can see Curse Agent PR. You've got Code Rabbit going over it and saying how it can be improved. Created this referral system.md file with all the tasks. I haven't even read it over all of it. You can see it's got a bunch of future tasks it wants to do. Here it's got like the model it's added and so on. I mean, it did go and create like 20 files and it did go and build like a functioning dashboard. Hopefully this works and hopefully it's not too much more work to actually get it working for real once I've tested it. But anyway, I will show you some of the things I noticed immediately that it got wrong. Let me start with the schema. Here on the left, you can see what it had done and then I asked it to fix it out. But it created like a new table for referral code. And I was like, just keep it simple. Just give me a referral code string. It was like over engineering for what I wanted. I'm not an affiliate referral platform. Just want a simple referral code for my system. Each user just needs one. Just put it in line here. This is what it had gone and done. It created a new referral code table. It had a user attached, a code, which is unique. If this code is active, I don't need to deactivate code. So basically, the only thing I needed was code. This can be added to the user table, the referrals. This will be all moved to the user table. So I told it to do that in the next prompt, and it fixed it up, which is good. Also noted, it noticed it created a referral reward table, which also, you know, like maybe, but it was a bit over engineering for what I wanted. All I want to do is give a free month of the platform and it can give Stripe credits to do that. Anyway, as you can see, it's removed all of this after one or two follow-up prompts from me. And you can see here, by the way, this is like crazy because it went and changed something completely unrelated to what I'm doing, group thread replies, cold email sender. And these don't appear anywhere in the project. They didn't do anything with this. I told it to delete it. Also, like it actually, when I'm using regular cast, it doesn't make like crazy changes like this. But here, yeah, when I just let it go as a background agent, it did. You can see here also this unique index is no reason for it, like irrelevant to its task. It's to do with the knowledge base, not nothing to do with referral system. And it's actually a mistake. It should be how it was. It was correct. Anyway, so that's just like sort of some random things it did, like just no need. Here you can see more changes I removed. In the end, I kept it, kept it simple referral code. So once I've prompted it to make those fixes, you can see a bunch of these files are changing because they don't work that way anymore. Here you can see quite a lot of changes in this file. Uh, I haven't even read over them, but yeah, those the, as the scheme was changed, those would need to be changed as well. And uh, some more stuff. This is specific to my project, but here you can see it, it did this post request. I probably should be using server actions here, which I'm using to mutate data. And so I told it to delete that file. There's a bunch of stuff in here. This is a file that's actually gone and added a sign up form data example. So yeah, this is not going to be relevant. I just want this to be a natural part of the sign up flow. So I'm going to have to continue prompting it to make that work properly. But my overall point here is it did a half decent job from what I can see. I still definitely need to iterate on this a few times. I don't think it can do tasks end to end without a human in the loop. This was like very focused, this task, which it was a good one for Cursor Agent to do, but it still needs more work. I probably also should have provided with more details ahead of time in terms of the PRD that I gave it. I just gave two lines. Overall, my experience, I think, is similar to a lot of other people out there. If you found more efficient ways to work where you really managed to get end to end working on tasks, that's great. But yeah, I don't think AI is quite there yet. Oh, and in terms of the model used, it was Claude Force on it, Max. I could try it with Opus with Gemini 2.5 Pro, but I assume we'd get similar results. Anyway, way longer video that I wanted. Maybe I can even put this on YouTube because it's long enough. You can see I've got a bunch of other stuff running here. Yeah, I wanted to use TipTap in some place in my app. I actually had a bunch of errors. And so it's gone and done the same thing five times over. I'd be annoyed if I didn't have cursor credits. Maybe I'll even go and run each one locally and just see what happened. But how it works as a whole cursor is it will create a new branch. It will like run all of this remotely so it doesn't impact yourself locally. For some reason, these aren't loading up. But yeah, you can create a pull request. You can check it out locally and continue working on it and push, and then it will get updated and everything. And you can see it makes a lot of changes in one go. What, like 1,700 lines were added, and these are all quite big PRs. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful, way longer than I wanted. But give Inbox Zero a star on GitHub. Wow, 8K, that's nice. Thank you for the support. And also check out Inbox Zero it's, itself. If you're overwhelmed with your email, I'm building the world's best AI personal assistant for email. So the plan is to take a lot of work off your back. 
over 10,000 people have signed up. It's growing steadily. So yeah, we'd love your support and check it out if you find that interesting.